Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with heads. Ladies and gentlemen, start your emulators. Welcome to another episode of Retro S, giving you your dose of nostalgia by reviewing games from your childhood. This episode is a versus battle special. This time the 16-bit hardware generation is the battlefield. As we vet the True Blue of Sega against the fighting game pedigree of Capcom. Axel Stone against Mike Hager. Streets of Rage against Final Fight. To start the proceedings, uh, we have decided to tackle the successor to Golden Axe. Which beat em up classic will emerge victorious? Well, without further ado, let's find out. Once again guys, this special series started nothing more with a dispute. After Ian the sharpshooter Harvey defeated Greg OG Loke Freeland, which took place just before the channel went to a temporary hiatus due to my epilepsy, he started gloating. Early on this month, it came to a point where Greg can take no more. This time he is after revenge, and the genre he selected is all too familiar with him. Beat em ups, and the rest, as they say, is history. Anyway, I digress, enough scene setting, or let's get on with this review. The Street of Rage franchise is one of the most recognizable franchises in the beat em up subgenre. The series' caliber was proven in 2020, with a collaboration of fan developers, including God Crush Games and French developer Dotty Mew, released the fourth entry of the series. To worldwide acclaim from both critics and the community. Even today, the game is holding on a very positive review rating on Steam. This particular title is the first entry of the series, which was released exclusively for the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis over in North America on August 7th, 1991. The story itself is set in the fictional American urban metropolis of Wood Oak City. A criminal syndicate led by Mr. X has taken over the city by corrupting the city's government. You play the parts of three former police officers, Axel Stone, Blake Fielding and Adam Hunter, and it is up to you to take down the syndicate, take down Mr. X, and get rid of the city's government of corruption. The accessibility scores are as follows. To start off strong, visibility game a 9. Due to the game's age, there are no colorblind modes available in this title. However, there is very little need for one. There are no color coded elements that can cause an issue for a colorblind player. To gain momentum or ability, give it 10. Again, due to the game's age, there is no spoken dialogue in this game. Back in those days, all dialogue was text based and imagination had to fill in the blinds. The introduction cutscenes tell the story of the game in a Star Wars crawl style format. The only thing you'll miss is the awesome soundtrack composed by the legendary Yuzo Koshiro. And to maintain momentum or mobility, I give it 10. There are numerous control layers which can be switched to via the game's options menu on the start screen. Even better, the controls can be fully customized when you're playing through the Sega Mega Drive Classics Collection, so this game is highly playable for a player with mobility impairments. Last but certainly by no means least, gameplay has also scored a 10. This game was built on the foundation which Golden Axe laid. The weapon mechanics in this game makes what makes this franchise stand out from the crowd and a highly congested market at the time of release. There are weapons that can be picked up and used at any time during a level, however these weapons are a, only have a limited amount of uses, so be careful with them. These weapons include knives, lead pipes and even samurai swords. In terms of lifespan, the game can be completed in 2 hours. That is double the average completion time of Golden Axe. And by the way, this information is sourced from HowLongToBeat.com. With challenging bosses to beat, including fire breathing acrobats, knife juggling performance, and Mr. X himself. This classic title is a must have for every Mega Drive owners out there. Seriously, if you own a Mega Drive and don't own this game, you're doing it wrong. This is Sponsor Commander 1992 Predator Disable Gaming Review signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.